David had become a great king. The dark days when his life was threatened were in the past, and these easy times had bred in him a sense of security, perhaps even self-security and self-reliance, that maybe his strength and ability was sufficient. Well, as yesterday our psalm hints at human limitations in the face of hubris, every now and again something happens to remind us that self-security and self-reliance are not things in which we can ultimately put our trust. Now, something has happened to David that has put his life into perspective and which has shown the psalmist his own helplessness. Very likely this was a time of illness, perhaps the one noted in First Chronicles chapter 21, which speaks of a plague in the land. You see, David has sinned by ordering a census of the people. What's wrong with that, we may wonder. Well, in the ancient world, there were two main reasons for counting the people. Firstly, for the levying of taxes, and secondly, to prepare forced labour for a military or other national enterprise. Ritual precautions would have been needed to do this, involving sacrifices and prayers and ritual purification. In Israel, people enrolled for national service were required to pay a ransom as well as to be ritually purified in order that they may avoid diseases and epidemics. After all, to gather so many men in one place would risk spreading disease. This is the exact opposite of social distancing. Well, it seems that none of this has happened. So there was a problem not only of motive, but of a lack of ritual preparation. And the result was a plague which killed 70,000 men. David's repentance and recovery seemed to be instrumental in his desire to build a temple on the site of Aranua, the Jebusite's threshing floor. Well, our psalm today is a hymn of praise for the dedication of the temple, which Solomon, David's son, rather than David, eventually built. Psalm 30 is a psalm, a song for the dedication of the temple of David. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I shall never be shaken. Lord, when you favoured me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. Even from the depths of folly and despair, yet God is still merciful to his people. And David knows that God is the God who turns wailing into dancing and mourning to joy. He is the God who is to be praised. A prayer for today. Lord our God, we turn to you in our time of need. For we too face days of illness and distress. We know that your anger lasts but for a moment, 
and your favour for a lifetime. So where we have gone astray, forgive us and lead us anew, for you are a God of mercy and we will praise you forever. Amen.